Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Well, greetings from Paragould, Arkansas. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background data on Paragould just to tell you where we're located. Uh, we're located in northeast Arkansas, about 20 miles northeast of Jonesboro, 90 miles northwest of Memphis, and about 9 miles from the Missouri Boot Hill. So that kind of gives you an idea of where we're located. Our population is about 26,000. Uh, that was according to the 2010 census. Uh, as far as the wastewater treatment plant, we can go on with the slides. Uh, this is the entrance to the plant. On average, we treat about 3 million gallons of wastewater daily. So for an area of our size, that, that, that's a pretty good uh, amount that we treat. So now I want to take you through the wastewater treatment plan and give you an idea of the different processes that we have and what their purpose is. Okay, this is the influent. The influent is where all the wastewater that is collected through the collection system comes into the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, you can see it looks gray. The water itself looks gray. And what you see over to the right of that screen, it, that is a bar screen. And the purpose of the bar screen is to remove larger objects from the wastewater uh, that might harm the equipment downstream. In this, we're removing solids. We're all also removing some organics within the wastewater itself. Mainly inorganics is what we're removing. Uh, things like um, oh, golf balls. We've had golf balls come here. We've had the, the kids' toys the, from McDonald's, Happy Meals, things like that. So that's what we have coming out. Next slide, please. Here again, that is the, uh, the bar screen. You can see on the left-hand side there is an automatic bar screen. So when the wastewater gets up to a certain point, we have a float that will come up, and there is a rack that will actually come down, or uh, fingers, that will clean out that bar screen. To the right, you can see a manual. We manually clean that one. So you can see some of the uh, objects that are taken out of the wastewater. Next screen. Once these items are removed from the wastewater, they are compacted and they go into this trailer. And we call this our screenings trailer. These screenings will end up in the landfill once we fill this up. Once we fill the trailer up, it goes to the landfill. And that's about the only way. You can incinerate, but that's not really recommended. And so really, the only way of getting rid of these items is to take it to the landfill. Next screen. Then the wastewater moves into an aerated grit chamber. The whole purpose of the grit chamber is to remove gritty, sandy material that can harm pumps and equipment downstream from this process. Uh, the next slide will show you uh, what the grit actually looks like. If you will look in that blue container uh, down below, you can see it looks like gritty, sandy material. It looks like dirt, basically. Um, there may also be things like cigarette butts, uh, things like that, that are in the wastewater that is removed from the grit chamber itself. This grit will be combined with the screenings and will be taken to the landfill. So we dump this um, container into the screenings trailer. Next slide, please. This is the heart of the wastewater treatment plant. Our plant uses the Onco oxidation ditch system to remove most of the organics from the wastewater. So we have microorganisms, we call them bugs. Uh, you have to have a microscope to see them. And they literally, their whole reason for being is to eat the organics that are left behind in the wastewater that have not been removed. So we try to push as much food to them as we possibly can, the food being the wastewater. Wastewater normally contains uh, human waste. So with that human waste, you have solids, you have organics, uh, you have uh, possibly oil and grease. There's the fecal coliform bacteria. Uh, also, the pH is corrected in here. What we do is we combine the wastewater with the microorganisms. We add um, oxygen to it. If you go to the next slide, you can see an aerator where we're actually adding the oxygen to the wastewater itself with the microorganisms. They're like us. They need food. They need oxygen to work and do their business, to do their work. So 
we, uh, we add them to this. Now, when wastewater treatment plants were designed, they were designed to remove the conventional type of pollutants, such as the organics from human waste, solids, uh, fecal coliform, they correct for pH. They also can remove oil and grease. They, however, were not designed to remove substances such as nitrogen, phosphorus, metals, PPCPs, and pharmaceuticals. I'm not saying that there's not some degree of treatment within a wastewater treatment plant, but they were not designed for that. Next slide, please. From the oxidation ditches, we go to the clarifiers. These are secondary clarifiers. And the whole purpose of this is to separate the wastewater from the solids themselves. So the solids will settle to the bottom of this uh, clarifier, which is about 15 to 20 feet deep in the ground. You uh, can see the skimmer arms are a little tough to see. If you see the black objects on the right and left hand side of the screens, those are going to be their skimmer arms on the top to remove any scum. There's also the skimmer arms on the bottom of these tanks, and they are the ones that will rake up the sludge from the bottom and collect it. Next slide, please. The wastewater will end up going over the weir of the secondary clarifier and come to the chlorine contact basin. One of the things that we have done, we have treated the wastewater as best we can with the exception of uh, disinfection, which is killing the pathogens or the fecal coliform that is still left behind. That's not going to be removed through a mechanical process or a conventional type process. So we add chlorine, and this, uh, this is the chlorine contact basin. And what EPA likes to see is at least a 30-minute contact time from the beginning of the introduction of the chlorine to the very end of the chamber. And you want at least a 0.5 part per million free chlorine residual left behind. That indicates adequate treatment. So you can see that the, the water or wastewater, you can see the boards coming up, and the wastewater has to snake its way around these boards in order to, be, uh, to, to make it out to the end. And that gives it plenty of contact time at the highest flow that we might possibly have within the plant. Next slide, please. And this is our final product. Uh, we also do a dechlorination process to remove any of the free chlorine that might be left over because that is dangerous to aquatic life and it can, it can cause a lot of fish kills and a lot of problems in the receiving streams. The whole process of chlorination dechlorination will also remove oxygen from the wastewater and there again, uh, aquatic organisms, fish, plants, they need that oxygen as well. So we re-aerate the wastewater before it's discharged and we, may, we check that to make sure that it is high enough. Next slide, please. Now, I discussed a little bit at the secondary clarifier, you know that uh, we separated the water from the solids. The solids are then further processed. This is a digester, an aerobic digester, where the solids go out and we digest it for approximately 30 days before it's further processed. Next slide, please. And this is what we actually end up with. This is the product. This is called biosolids. We are fortunate in our area that we, pr we are able to produce an exceptional quality Class A biosolid that is sold to area farmers to apply on their land. Uh, this also goes through extensive testing. And I guess my point with all of this is the fact that the wastewater, whatever is left behind in the wastewater is going to end up in the receiving stream. So what we don't remove is going to end up in the environment in water sources, water streams, rivers, lakes, whatever we discharge into. But that's not all. We also have these solids that we produce that we have to do something with. And, and as I mentioned, we have, we have farmers that buy this biosolid to apply on their fields as a fertilizer. This fertilizer then uh, will go into the soil, but it can also run off and run into the rivers and streams. So we have to be very, very careful and do adequate testing to make sure that it is safe for applying on land and that our, our wastewater is safe to be discharged into the rivers and streams because somewhere down the line, someone is going to pick that water back up for drinking water or it's going to end up in some sort of a drinking water system somehow, some way. Anything and everything that we do or discharge into our wastewater systems is going to affect our waterways and it is so important that we get the word out and that we educate the, the public 
and that everything that they do or everything that they discharge will affect them it's eventually. It may not affect us in our lifetimes, but our children, our grandchildren later on. Um, so we need to be thinking about that. One thing I do want to bring up before I conclude is WEF, the Water Environment Federation, has a new campaign called Water's Worth It. I invite you all to go check it out. It talks about water, the importance of water, uh, why we need to protect our water resources. So it is an excellent um, source to go in and actually get some more information besides the WET prog program. Next slide, please. Special thanks. Uh, I would like to give special thanks to Lorena Lyle, Teresa Shrum, and Molly Ward from the Project WET Foundation. Uh, they have been wonderful in helping me get through this um, and making sure that I stayed on track. Uh, Barbara Miller, the ecologist at the uh, Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality, uh, she has been very instrumental in getting me involved in the Project WET and I absolutely love it. Uh, this year I became actually a facilitator for the Project WET here in Arkansas and uh, Barbara is a, a, an awesome individual. Um, I was listening to uh, Lorena talk about her earlier, and, and she is a go-getter. She, she really is something, and I have enjoyed working with her so tremendously. I would also like to give special thanks to uh, the general manager and CEO of Paragold Light, Water, and Cable, Mr. Daryl Phillips. He is the one um, that I went to for advice on this, and uh, he gave me his blessing in doing this, so I want to thank him. So uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too much and I hope you learned a little something about wastewater treatment.